Welcome back to my channel and video series. I'm building out a DIY expedition camper and a total composites camper box on a custom four-wheel drive Mitsubishi Fuso from Earth Cruiser Core Chassis. I've been building out my cabinet framing with 8020 extruded aluminum. And the reason why I've been doing that, I've talked about, but there are many reasons why. It has a lot of strength, has a lot of flexibility, adaptability, and of course also durability over time over other materials. But yet there are a lot of tips and tricks that I'm going to share in this video that really help you build it out much more smoothly or quickly. Whether you're doing this in an expedition camper or any other kind of build, I think these tips and tricks will certainly help you out. I've learned a lot from doing this in my time building out all this cabinetry framing in my camper. And I will show in future videos just how incredibly strong not only this material is, but also the adhesion with the glues to the camper box body that it is beyond the strength of any other fasteners or wood that could ever withstand. And particularly over time with exposure to weather, water, sunlight, temperature fluctuations, etc. So hang in there and let's learn a little bit together and I'll help you with your camper build or any other build with something like the 8020 extruded aluminum system. All right, so let's talk about fasteners a little bit here for a minute. So, so you can see right here, I have a gusseted double corner and that's how I give this vertical loss strength. So it's, I'm moving it right now and it's not really moving much. Uh, so I was getting more strength as I get these cross braces in here, which I'm working on right now. And so the gusset just gives it a lot more strength. And granted, it'll force it to be perfectly straight and aligned with the, the horizontal disc, which is what I want. So this whole cabinet is all parallel and perpendicular to each other. So anyways, that's one thing to think about. The other thing I'm thinking about here is, is this is a non-gusseted two by corner. And where I'm using this, the R for these horizontals are going to go in between here. And the reason why I'm using a double is because that'll not allow it to rotate in or out, right? Because it has two positions in both directions, so it can't rotate this way, which is the key thing, I don't want it rotating that way. If I used a single corner fastener, such as this, right, it could rotate, it could pivot on either point there, right, pivot this way. So then what I'd want to do is do another one down, in the one in the top, one in the bottom of that piece, so that between the two, they couldn't pivot. One thing you do is just use one piece instead of four, or one piece each side instead of two, so two total instead of four total. Same number of bolts, same number of nuts, it's just half the, the corner brackets. Granted, these are more expensive corner brackets, but they're cheaper on a per, call it, hole opening, so a little bit less expensive. Probably all about the same amount of material and everything else, so not really saving any weight there. But this also saves some time, because I only have to install one fastener instead of two in order to get this in there. So another little trick I've learned is also being able to preload these fasteners. And that means also nuts. You see I have my containers of the screws I'm using, and the two different nuts I'm using, the drop and a roll of nuts, and the economy nuts, like that, right? And these economy nuts, one, they're a heck of a lot cheaper than the roll -in. And the benefit this provides me is that now what I can do with this is I can slide it right in really nice and easy. I don't need any roll-ins here or anything else. So I can slide that in. I'll take my other one right here and slide it in. And another thing you'll notice is that this one is all silver bolts. This one's silver on the bottom and black on the top. These are all stainless, but if these were an alloy, then... I would use these on the vertical because that's not like where any water is going to pull up like here. Granted, this is not a wet area, so I'm not worried about that at all. But by preloading these, I can go ahead and get these economy nuts essentially just started here and same on this side. And normally I'd probably even tighten down these corners a little bit just to make this a little easier on me, less uh, wobbling and adjustment. But you can see like that top one on this side almost perfectly lined up. There we go. And now I can just slide this right down in place. By putting them on top, another trick, the, the brackets on top, I can easily access the screws. I don't have to look, bend down and look from underneath here to get those. So that's another little trick too I've learned. Just simple little things like this all can make a pretty material difference. And then I'll show you another little trick. In order to get these level, boom, simple little level meter. I love this thing. And one thing I do is still working, <laughs> is I check my level of the camper on the center of the floor. I put it right there in the middle. We're at 0.1 degrees. 
about right there in the middle. And if we put down here on the floor, right about in the same spot in the middle, look at that, 0 0.1 degrees. So we're 0 0.1, 0 0.2 as I rock the camper. So within a tenth of a degree uh, to perfect on level on that piece. And we'll just keep checking them as we go along here, make sure they're all good. And so that this is also level. And also I want to check it level in this direction as well. So it's a couple little things to think about. I'm going to get this down. This is going to be really a, uh, a wall attachment is what this is going to be. This is a really nice little tool. It's a rounded hex end. These come in different lengths. This is a longer one. It's nice to have longer ones, but it's actually more nice sort of a shorter ones most of the time. And I can put different little attachments in here, but this one's really good. But this little tool here is great. And so I'm going to pick, for the most part, I'm just going to pick a what I think is a pretty good position. You know what I'm going to do, actually? I'm going to push it down ever so slightly here. And there we go. I can... Because I got this gusset piece down here, really just take it right down to the base here. There we go. So I, I know I'm at two inches because that's what this gusset is, is two inches. Get this thing in position. What I want to do, make sure I'm not both pushing that out. Nope. I want to check this level, get these tightened up. I want to make sure they're all butted up in the right spot there. As I tighten these ones on the top, it is going to possibly pull this up ever so slightly, but I also want to make sure my alignment's good. So I keep my fingers on this. So um, I've got a good horizontal alignment here, which I can tell. And also this bracket's all in a good spot. I can tell I'm slightly just like a fraction of a millimeter off. So I'm readjusting that. And I'm also going to want to check my tilt angle here. And then this tilt. And then this tilt. And just to make sure everything's nice and straight and square and everything else. Another way I could do is I could take one of these, since that's that dimension, put it under here and just push it down here. And I know that both these are exactly the same height. And I'm also going to only tighten these down just so they're firm. Because then that way I make sure my alignment's good, everything's trued up, my brackets flush back into the corner here and press down the corner before it force sinks tight and then it can't move and it doesn't isn't provide as much strength by everything being flush up against each other. So there we go. All right, so another thing, why do I use stainless screws? And the reality is you really don't. You could use alloys. And this black one's a leftover alloy. The alloys are less expensive and they're lighter weight. And they really shouldn't rust in any indoor environment unless it's like in a wet area like a like a bath. And so they're probably fine to use, but you know, I decided just to kind of standardize on the stainless so I know that I don't have to worry if it's in a wet or dry area, right? I can just go ahead and, and use it. And so that's a little bit of benefit and uh, of that. But yeah, the to be conscious of cost and stuff, definitely the alloys are a little bit less expensive than stainless. And the black oxide stainless, the black stainless are more expensive as well than the regular silver stainless. So anything to think about from cost. So there's some, some balances and optimization there that you can think about as you're building out your space. And also the alloys are going to be slightly lighter weight. So there is a benefit to that too. So if you have all dry areas, then those are probably just fine to use. And you have to realize too is that most of these nuts, they're just an alloy, zinc coated alloy steel anyways. So they're going to rust out possibly if you use stainless screws. So sometimes an alloy to alloy is just going to be a better match than stainless to an alloy. Also, another thing to think about is you'll notice I mentioned I put my brackets on the top of this piece here. On this one, I'm putting them on the bottom. And that way, because this is up high, so I could I don't have to reach up there and try to see it and feel it from there. Or I can just see it and feel it from here. And these kinds of brackets, by putting them in there like this, it makes it really easy for me to slide this up and down to make the final adjustment on height and get it perfectly positioned as I tighten it in. As I put this small little piece in right here, sometimes I need different tools to be able to access. This small little ratchet is wonderful for getting in these tight corners where the larger ratchet can't get in. Ah, which is over here. So you see, I try to get that in there. It's a pretty tight fit, right? But it can work for this one. So I can get this one nice and tight that way. And same here, but this small ratchet can get these smaller corners. And of course, nice and tight, flush, strong. Make sure it's flush up with every piece here. It's level. I want the ratchet out. I always go around and also check every other piece that I can get to just to make sure they're all tight and strong. Another thing I do is I check my level. And so I use my level 
gauge here and I check the floor level about one and a half degrees going in that direction so one little trick is I know I've got this other piece in the right place so now that you know that that's in the right place therefore this piece should be pretty much lined up about where it needs to be but I'm going to still do the top one in first get it secured so I don't bump the lower one down and then I'm going to not get it totally tight slide down so that I can just pivot this lower piece in and get it right over that piece so I can see it and get the right height and even as I pivot it in you notice it tightened up this plate and look at that see perfect alignment get that right in there now I just have to get that straight now I want to actually loosen this a hair go back to my tape measure trick let's get it set perfectly back to my nine and a half inches and if I press this down to the floor and the bracket down boom now I'm locked in so that's it now I know I'm in the exact right spot and go replicate for the other one and while I've got this out now they know it's centered adjust one of them there and tighten the other one just go ahead and get that perfect so everything is exactly in level and at the same elevation there we go and this is part of the trickiness getting those just right sometimes when you tighten them they loosen up or they move the bracket a tad so there's a little bit of a just to get that right tightness and that's just a little bit of a, a practice and so I'll check these two to make sure it's in that same direction right because my camper is a little bit off level here leaning forward so there you go they're all they're both within a tenth of a degree of 1.5 and 1.6 or 1.4 and 1.6 so these are level which is awesome that's what I wanted to be so they, and they should be at exactly the same level because my little trick there with the tape measure one thing I'm using instead of individual nuts because I'm put, using these double brackets are these they have two holes get these all these holes lined up right here by sliding this out so I can see the alignment alignment looks great I can then go ahead and insert all these screws just a single little driver to make it easier to get these in in this limited tight space here and just go ahead and get it started there we go this one's a little bit difficult and I can always push this down in here to get my alignment pretty much perfect from the hole from the bracket into the nut and voila so now what I can do I'm going to start in this end push this down here so I get this nice and flush tighten this down now you know it's nice and flat and level push the seam here put that pressure on there tighten that down check the level Perfect, right on. I'm gonna use these other brackets right here to line up my vertical placement. It's very convenient. Get this one started just gently tight so it'll hold vertically in place. Pivot it to over the other hole. That uh, one goes right in. Loosen that back up a tad so I get my vertical height here. It's already set. All you need to do is press the tape measure down. Now I have it in place. Now without moving it vertically, just get it so it's straight, vertically straight, and then come back in. I'll check the, the height once again, just to make sure. Yep, we're bottoming out both of them at the same time. And get this nice and tight. There we go. I hope those 80-20 building tips really help you with your cabinet framing or anything else you're building with 80-20 or something similar. Certainly, I've been very happy with it and I think you'll be happy with it as you see so much more of my 80-20 build out within this Expedition Camper Box. Also, lots come up including cutting the camper box pass-through and showcasing the strength of this 8020 with the adhesives that I'm using and of course also starting the big electrical system installation. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and please do ask any questions you have. We'll be glad to answer them as well as I can in the comments below.